Hi Aquarius, welcome to June. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. And before I start your reading, I want to talk about what's coming up this month astrologically. So we have Mercury moving direct on the 3rd of June. And then Saturn, one of your ruling planets, is moving retrograde on the 4th. Uh, on the 14th, we have a full moon in Sagittarius, and at the same time, Mercury moves into Gemini. Then we have a new moon in Cancer on the 28th, and Neptune moves into a retrograde period as well. So, but let's see what's coming up for Aquarius in terms of love and relationship for the month of June 2022. What does Aquarius need to know for June 2022? Sun, moon, or rising? What's coming up in terms of love and relationships for June 2022? What is coming up for Aquarius? The sun, the eight of pentacles, the page of cups, the three of wands, the ten of cups, the king of swords, the eight of cups, the seven of pentacles, the ten of wands, and the Three of Pentacles. And the card at the bottom of the deck is the Ten of Pentacles. This is great. Okay, so you're starting the month off with the sun. You can't do better than that. The sun is a great card. It means pure joy. It means, uh, it can mean marriage. But it can mean connecting with someone that you really enjoy. You're really loving your life in June. Um, these two people are having fun. They're honoring their inner child. They're being creative. They just, you, you might be with someone that when you're with them, you feel that time stands still. You're like two kids in a sandbox, just having fun. Um, this could be a new relationship because I'm seeing the, the page of cups here in the past. Um, and with the eight of pentacles, I feel like it's like you're working on it. It's one day at a time kind of thing, but you're having fun at the same time. So you're not rushing into anything. Um, and this person could be kind of romantic. This page of cups can be a little bit sensitive, creative, artistic, very tender in their feelings, a little bit immature maybe, or idealistic in love. Um, but this is definitely, pages usually represent messages. So you may have received a message of love from someone. Someone has told you, hey, I really like you, or has it revealed their feelings. Uh, or if not, they, I mean, this is in the past, so I think you already know who this person is. But it's at the beginning stages, and you are starting to see success because the Three of Wands is here. You're getting out more. You're meeting people. You're socializing more. You have the Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. So not only is this bringing more love into your life, it's also bringing more financial security. You feel like this person is really there for you. Or if, if you don't feel that way, you will feel that way um, as things progress. As a matter of fact, you have three tens in this reading now that I'm looking. Three tens, two eights, a seven. <laughs> so um, I feel like you've arrived. You're, you're going to feel this month like you've arrived, like you came, you came, you're coming out of a difficult time. Because you have this Ten of Wands here, which is a card of carrying a heavy burden. And I feel like at this month, you're going to be able to put that burden down because you have someone that's there for you, that's helping you. You're not in it, but you're not just doing it alone. Because, you know, Aquarius is very an independent energy. Uh, you're, you're not someone who likes to need others. You know, you're like, I can handle it myself. I don't need people. But sometimes we do need people. Sometimes it's nice to have help. It's nice to have someone that has your back, that can help you, uh, you know, the work, when you have like two people doing the job, it gets done faster, and you don't feel like you're carrying this heavy burden. 
And I feel like this person is going to be very helpful to you in some way. Um, you have the King of Swords energy. Now, this could be your energy because it's a sword. Um, but if it's not, I, don't, I think it's your energy. I feel like you're doing a lot of evaluating because the King of Swords energy is about learning to dis it's discernment. What's real? What's not real? What do I need to keep in my life? What do I need to release? If this is a person, it could be that you're dealing with an air sign, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra. But it can also mean um, this person may seem a little distant at times or unavailable, emotionally unavailable, but they love you. I feel like this person really cares. They just have a different way of showing it. Um, and this could also be your energy for some of you. You could be just evaluating, like, can I trust this relationship? Is this person going to be right for me? Where is this relationship going to go? Because you have the Seven of Pentacles here. It's like you're planting seeds. You just planted some seeds of a new relationship or even a new beginning in an old relationship. Um, and you're waiting to see what's going to happen. You know, is this good? what's this going to lead to? And I feel like it's only going to lead to good things. It's going to, because here you have the Eight of Cups um, in your negative thinking sector. So you might have walked away from something that wasn't working. Um, you're leaving behind whatever is no longer fulfilling you. And that could be a job or a relationship. Um, if something is just not right and it's, it's not giving you the joy it once gave you, you're going to be walking away. And you might have been like a little bit apprehensive about it. Like, you know, if I leave this what if the new thing is not better or, you know, what do I do? You know, it's the unknown, fear of the unknown. But I wouldn't worry. I think that you're coming into a period not only of love, but also success and recognition because you have this three of pentacles here. The three of pentacles is career success, recognition, promotion, but it's also um, like you're finally being seen for who you are and your talents are being seen. So it's possible that you walk away from one relationship and you're connecting with someone new that brings a lot of joy and creativity in your life. Um, it's also, I feel like you're going to be more social. You're getting together with people. You're giving birth to something. So there could be a new creative project uh, this month as well. Uh, and you're working as part of a team or a group. But whatever you're doing, it's going to bring you recognition. So I feel like not only is love coming this month, but also money. And you're not wasting your time on things that are no longer serving you. And the other thing is, I feel like you're going to feel less stressed out and less burdened. Like you, you've come, like the Ten of Wands is, um, this person is like working really hard, carrying a heavy burden. And you're going to be able to, because it's the Ten, you're at the end of the cycle of that. And so you're going to be able to put that burden down. And I think the reason for that is because of these new people coming into your life, not only love, but also friendships, um, where you're getting together with a group of people. And it's going to, I feel like it's just going to be, um, positive in all ways, in many ways. Um, so let's see. Anyway, love is on this month, love and fun and joy and career success even, um, so let's see what the astrology says. We have this full moon in Sagittarius, and that's happening in your 11th house. That's the house of groups, friendship. Um, the sun is in your fifth house. That's the house of creative self-expression, fun, joy, romance. Um, so something is coming to completion by the middle of June. You're going to be celebrate. You're going to be something's going to be revealed or finishing up. You might be finishing up a project, or you might. Um, See, that, like some truth will be revealed because the, the um, Sagittarius, the full moon usually brings things to the surface. So you're going to find out who your friends are. Who are my friends? Who are the people I should be w spending my time with? You know, who is, who's there for me? Who's on team Aquarius? Now, at the same time that this full moon happens, Neptune is squaring the full moon, um, the sun and the moon in your second house. So there could be some confusion around money, some financial situation. So make sure that you look carefully. If you're dealing with any kind of finances, check all the details because there could be some miscommunication or, or confusion around money. 
uh, at this at this time. But the positive thing is, um, or Neptune could also mean, because Neptune in the second house, it can bring confusion around money, but it could also mean you're making money through some type of creative creative project. Um, Saturn is in your first house, and Saturn is one of your rulers. It's, it was an ancient ruler of Aquarius. Now we have Uranus also as a co-ruler. But Saturn in your first house, you're coming into your power. You're being seen more as... You're being respected. You're being seen as the professional that you are. And Saturn is trining the sun and sextile the moon. So this is going to be this full moon. Um, you're going to get some type of recognition around this full moon where people are going to see, hey, you know what? This person really has their stuff together. This person has accomplished. This person is a professional. Um, Venus will be in your fourth house with Uranus and the North Node. So there could be some changes going on around your house. Maybe you're trying to make it prettier or better. Um, Venus in the fourth. Also, you could be doing more creative projects in the home. Um, there could even be love, an opportunity for love and romance uh, in your house. Uh, because the fourth house. And if you're living with someone, the relationship might be getting along better. You have, there's more harmony. Venus, Venus brings love and harmony. But when Venus goes through your fourth house... You may feel like, well, I need to paint or I need to, you know, freshen things up. Things have gotten old or stale. So you might be moving furniture around. You might be decorating, bringing in some new touches to make your home more pleasant. Um, Saturn is, Venus is going to be moving towards a square with Saturn. So you might be, so don't get so caught up in work that you don't have time for love. That's, a, that's the only thing. Um, you might be seen as, like, you're so passionate about this project that you're working on that people might think that you're too unapproachable. So you don't want to give that vibe of stay away. You want to give the vibe of come on, come on in, <laughs> sit down, have a, have a cup of coffee. So Mercury is moving into Gemini, and at this point it'll be in your fifth house. Um, <clears throat> Gemini in the fifth house of love or creative self-expression, it could bring someone who is a good communicator into your life. It could mean that you're involved not only with creative projects, but also writing, communicating, speaking, t using technology. So you could be developing a website or you could be developing, um, publishing, you know, writing a book or something or, or involved in marketing, social media. Uh, all those things are going to be part of your, um, your month, this month. And especially since Gemini, Mercury will be at the zero degree, and it's at home in Gemini, so it's strong in Gemini. So you're going to be communicating a lot. If you meet someone under this influence, they're a good communicator. So you could meet a, a Gemini or a Virgo, someone who's ruled by Mercury. Um, but whatever it is, your conversations are going to be lively and exciting and fun. Um, just before this full moon, Mercury makes a square with Pluto in your 12th house. So you may have some issues around control, power struggles, some psychological issues you have to deal with. Um, maybe some anger issues from the past, past relationships. You don't want them filtering into this new situation. So you may want to, you know, get some counseling to resolve some of those issues so you don't, um, so you don't, into, you know, mess up what could be a good relationship or a good beginning. Mars will be in your third house in Aries, and it's coming together with Chiron, um, also in your third house in Aries. So this is a good time to heal any um, family issues with any siblings, relatives, aunts, uncles, your immediate family. You may feel like um, you have something to say. You have an important message to deliver, and you want to talk about it. So it could be that part of your healing process with the Pluto aspect um, is about communication, communicating to people that are close to you and getting to the bottom of something, speaking your truth, speaking, you know, telling people how you really feel. If you've been holding things in and, and being angry, you know, from like repressing your anger, um, this is a good time to get that message out. But just be careful with Mars and Aries that you're not um, too aggressive in your communication style because you could be coming on too strong with Mars in your third house of communication and in Aries, because Aries is the warrior sign. So you don't want to sound like you're fighting with everybody. You just want to, you know, the goal is healing, not fighting. The goal is let's talk about it, but let's not 
you know, but don't be too aggressive or too um, bullying when you're communicating. So then we have Saturn goes retrograde, by the way, in on the 4th. And Saturn, as one of your ruling planets, you might be rethinking your image. Because Saturn's in your first house. You might be rethinking, um, you know, your body. Are you doing enough to take care of your body? Are you committed to, you know, you might, if you're having any bone or teeth issues, you know, go to the dentist, work out more, develop those muscles, those bones, get the right nutrition. Um, but also you want to, you want to be seen as someone, you're changing your image. And so when Saturn retrogrades, um, that energy turns in, inward. So you might be rethinking, like, how do I, how do I, how do I want to be seen in the world? How do I, you know, what am I doing to support this image that I want to show to the world? Because the first house is how people see you, but it's also your physical body. So you may decide to, you know, commit to a program that strengthens your body, uh, especially your bones or your teeth, because Saturn rules bones and teeth, uh, hair. But also, um, you're ready to do the work. You're ready to commit to a project or to commit to a um, self-improvement in some way. So then we have the new moon in Cancer. Uh, and that is happening in your sixth house of work and health. So again, um, you're, you might be learning at the, new, at the full moon what you need to change about your health habits, uh, how you can make yourself feel better, feel stronger. Um, but there's also a new beginning so you might be on a new path to taking care of yourself, nurturing yourself. Maybe you've been driving yourself too hard, working too hard, and you haven't given yourself enough time to heal and to recharge. So this new moon um, is going to be a positive new beginning for you in the area of health, but it could also be a new beginning in the area of your day-to-day -day work. So there could be a new project that comes in that um, has a healing effect on you in some way. Jupiter will be in your third house, and it's sextile Venus in the fifth. So you're going to be getting out and about. You're going to be socializing more in June, especially by this new moon, which is at the end of the month. Um, Jupiter in the third house is squaring the new moon. So you might be really busy uh, socializing. Like you might have... I feel like there's going to be a conflict between, okay, I need to, to rest, I need to recharge, but I've got all these activities going on. How do I balance that? So don't do anything in excess. Don't go over the top. Don't overcommit to anything. Know what your limits are. Um, but Venus, romance is on with Venus in the fifth, and especially that she's making a positive aspect to Jupiter in the third. So you could find love just running around town, just in your local environment, uh, just getting out and socializing. So get out. Don't don't be a hermit this month uh, if you're looking for love. And by this new moon, Mars has moved out of your fourth uh, out of your second house, and is now in your third house. Um, let's see, where was Mars last month? Yeah, no, Mars is still in your third house. Okay, so Mars is in your third house all month. So, and it's sextile Saturn. So by the new moon, I feel like you could really make a positive. Uh, you can really come up with a good strategic plan to get where you want to go in life. And it has to do with communication, speaking up, talking to people about, like instead of stewing, you know, being angry and keeping things to yourself, talk about it. And you'll be amazed at how you can make some positive changes. And also get out more, right? Maybe you need to write. Maybe you start a journal or start a blog. Um, because the thir your third house is on fire this month. I feel like you have a lot to say. And that communication and even just writing about it, like keeping a journal or writing a blog or something, is going to help in heal in a healing way. It's going to help heal any kind of family relationships that have gone off the rails. And you also, because you have Jupiter, Mars, Mercury, and Chiron all in your third house this month, at the end of the month by this new moon. So that's, the third house is your local environment, your siblings, communication, your communication style. Um, so I feel like you're, you've got a lot to say this month and you're going to start to speak. And those conversations and whatever wisdom you have to share is going to have a healing effect on you. Um, Saturn is still in your first house. It's going to be squaring Pluto in the 12th. So you have work to do. You have some psychological work to do. If you have any repressed anger or rage, 
Um, you want to work on that this month because it's going to help your image. You're going to help to release because the 12th house is the house of releasing hit, you know, hidden, whatever is hidden, hidden baggage. Um, and you have the support of all these other planets that are wanting you to speak up and talk about it and release it. So if there's something that you haven't been willing to face or something that's a blind spot that everyone else can see but you, um, you're going to have, you're going to be able, it would be a good time to like talk about it, go through some type of counseling where you get at those hidden blind spots, that baggage that's been holding you back. Maybe you have some issues around power, feeling empowered. Um, so you need to release um, those those blockages. Don't and in the at the same time, don't let anyone bully you, but don't be bullied by psychological programming either. So work on that psychological aspect, whatever's hidden, whatever. If you're being run by unconscious programming, um, it would be a good time to look at that and heal and release. And the way you're going to do that is through connecting with people communicating to the people you're having any difficulties with, releasing anger in a healthy way, um, choosing your words carefully. You know, you don't want to rip someone's head off, um, but you want to release like a slow pressure. You know, you don't want to wait till everything builds up and then you explode. Um, but you can do a lot of healing this month. And I feel like you're on the, the path to success and love. At, you know, if you do the work, by the end of the month, you may have um, a, a really good plan that's going to help you and your whole your self worth your self image and you're going to be attracting love and success by the end of the month so things look really good for you Aquarius um, if you're willing to face some of your demons and you're willing to uh, speak up about what's bothering you you can come to some successful conclusions and finally get the recognition and the love you deserve so that's my forecast for this month, if you like this reading, click on the like button, click on the subscribe button. If you'd like a private reading, click on the link in the description box. It'll take you to my website and we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, have a wonderful, wonderful June and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.